Hello class, Professor Anderson here. Let's talk about how you can in fact measure gravity using only a piece of paper, a pencil, and your smartphone. To do this, first we've got to think a little bit about the physics of falling. So pretend that you're standing on top of a building and you're up at a height h above the ground and you drop an object and you'd like to know a little bit about the motion of that object as it races towards the ground. How long does it take? Does it depend on how high it? And how does it depend on gravity? So to do this, we need to go back to our kinematic equations. And one of the kinematic equations that we have is the following. Y final equals Y initial plus VY initial times T plus one half AY T squared. Right? This is a great equation to understand the position Y as a function of time given these other variables. Now in our case, we're going to say that Y final is at the ground. So that becomes zero. Y initial is, of course, where we started, height h. Vy initial is the initial speed at which you throw it. But if you just drop it from rest, then that is zero. What about Ay? Ay, we know, near the surface of the Earth, has a magnitude of g, but it's in the negative direction. So we put a negative g right there. And that's going to be the thing that we want to measure. All right, we can simplify this equation quite a bit. We get 1 half gt squared equals h. And now let's just solve this equation for g. If I multiply by 2 and divide by t squared, I get g equals 2h over t squared. Now, here's the question. Can you measure g in your lab right now with a piece of paper, a pencil, and your smartphone? Yes, you can. The way we're going to do it is the following. We're going to take a piece of paper and we're going to fold it in half. And on top of that piece of paper, you're going to put the pencil. Now, a piece of paper is exactly eight and a half by 11 inches. So the height is 11 inches, exactly. The pencil is our object that we're going to drop. And we need to very carefully measure the time that it takes to drop from a height of 11 inches. So set up your smartphone, put it on slow motion mode, and now videotape somebody karate chopping the paper. This allows the pencil to start evenly at time zero and then fall uniformly towards the table. By stepping through the video frame by frame, you can in fact measure how many frames it took to get to the ground. So try it yourself. And let's see what you get. So when I try this for my experiment, I got the following. The number of frames was equal to 57. And if I look at my smartphone, it tells me it is recording at 240 hertz, 240 frames per second. So that means each frame is equal to 1 over 240 seconds, 1 240th of a second. Okay? So this is going to allow me to calculate the time now, right? 57 times 1 over 240. What about the height? Well, the height h we know is exactly 11 inches. But we need to do this in SI units, and so we have to convert this to meters. How do you do that? Well, we know that anytime you convert from one unit to another, you just need to multiply by 1. So I know that there are 2.54 centimeters per inch, and I know that there are 100 centimeters in a meter. Okay, and so now we have h. h is equal to 11 times 2.54 times 1 over 100. And now we can take all this information and we can plug it back in for g and let's see what we get. We get g is equal to 2 times 11 times 2.54 times 1 over 100. And then we're going to divide by 
t squared, which is 57 times 1 over 240. That whole thing is squared. Plug this into your calculator and tell me what you get. I tried it and I got 9.9. 9.9 in SI units, meters per second squared, which is really close to the exact number, which is, of course, 9.8. We're about 1% off, which is pretty good. But you can do something else here. You can also calculate your error bars. How do you do it? Well, as you step through that video, you notice that it's hard to tell one frame from the next. And if you do this experiment multiple times, sometimes you'll get 56, sometimes you'll get 57, sometimes you'll get 58 frames. If I think about moving this number from 57 to 58, what do I calculate for G? If I go to 56, what do I calculate for G? Those are your error bars. And if you do it, you can double check. It's about an extra 0.3. So this should be your final answer. 9.9 .9 plus minus 0.3 meters per second squared, which is really close to the actual value of G. All right, so you just did that. You did a measurement of G right there in front of you with a piece of paper, a pencil, and a smartphone. Congratulations, and if that's not clear, come see me in office hours. Cheers.